Okay, so up next, I'm going to be reviewing Revolt Against the Modern World by Julius Evola. So, Evola, he's quite a controversial art uh, author, as many people know. Um, he was uh, very much associated with fascism in the early 19th century, or 20th century. Um, and he has some he has some pretty radical ideas. It's a, uh, this book specifically is supposed to be like his magnum opus or like his, um, it's supposed to be all encompassing for his philosophies, right? He discusses pretty much everything that he believes in this book, at least to a light degree. Um, it's a, it, it's a, it's a decently big book. It's about, let me see here. I think it's about 400 pages, if I'm not mistaken. It's about 300, 370 pages. Uh, so it's it's a little lengthy. Um, this was one of the first books that I picked up when I decided decided to get into reading, and it took me quite a while to read it as I didn't read very often. I was a slow reader. I'm still a slow reader today, but I I read much more often and for much longer than I used to. Um, but it took me quite a while to read. Um, as for my thoughts on the book itself, my view of Julius Evola and traditionalism is, my, my feelings on it are quite mixed, to be completely honest with you. On one hand, um, I'll, I'll have a special place in my heart for this book forever because it um it definitely gave me a good set of principles as far as religion and spirituality goes and it um it taught me a lot of things that are important for an individual and a lot of things that are important for uh for a religion right um it inspired me myself to get in uh to get into spirituality and into religion. But I think that's pretty much about all that this book will do for someone. He spends a lot of time talking about things that just about any actual religion on earth will teach you pretty easily and much more efficiently and without being as, um, as LARPy if that makes sense, because to be quite honest, traditionalism is a bit of a LARP in my mind. Um, so yeah, a lot of the things, a lot of things he talks about are something that are taught within most, uh, within most religions today. Um, there are a couple things that I think a lot of religion, that I think are really uh, that are really good that you can get from this book that not a lot of religious people will talk about today. And that's essentially hierarchy and the, um, uh, what's a, what's a word for it? Yeah, I guess you could essentially just say the metaphysical hierarchy, right? Um, and he talks about how this, uh, ties into regality and into government structures. And he's a, he's a believer that, um, kings kings should rule over governments and kings should be uh should be those who are closest to god or closest to the deity right um and i think that is reflected in a lot of religions today um in my own religion um the church of jesus christ of latter-day saints we have the prophet at the top of our church and he's essentially supposed to be the closest connection between the between the lesser realm, our realm, and the higher realm, God's realm, which he talks a lot in this book as well. Um, yeah. Um, betraying the name of this book, he actually does not so much call for an actual revolt against the modern world. It's more of a... Um, It's more of an, uh, almost an exhortation of sorts, um, where he kind of explains why the modern world is messed up, right? Um, 
But what is there to say about this book, really? I mean, I don't know if I would consider it a necessary reading at all, to be quite frank with you. I think aside, I think aside from the uh, the need for spiritual hierarchy in my life, I think aside from that, I probably could have I probably could have gone on without reading this pretty well. Um, I don't think I don't think most people need to read this book. Um, but yeah, I think that's about all I could really say as for as for a rating. I could, hmm. I'd probably give it like, I think I'd give it a seven flat. Yeah, I think I would just give it a seven flat. It maybe even less, maybe more like, more maybe more like a six point seven, right? It's um definitely not definitely not a required reading. You can learn a lot of the things that it teaches through other more uh, more reputable sources um, and yeah it was a uh, although I will as I said before I will still always have appreciation for this book for showing me some things that I desperately needed to see um, but yeah that has been my book review of revolt against the modern world by Julius Evola